Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, glad to present our paper, Knowledge Graph Reasoning with Relational Direct Graph uh, in the Web Conference 2022 here. I'm Yong Chi Zhang from the Fourth Paradigm Corporation, and this is a joint work with Professor Chen Ming Yao from Tsinghua University. Uh, let's first talk about the background of uh, Knowledge Graph Reasoning. Knowledge Graph is a special kind of graph structure data where nodes represent entities and edges represent interactions among the entities. The basic unit in Knowledge Graph is in the form of triplets uh, with subject entity relation and object entity, noted as SR and O. KG is a semantic graph such that we should carefully model both semantic information and structural information. There are, there are several representative KGs in the industry. Uh, KG reasoning has benefited many applications such as question answering, recommendation, biology, uh, research, and uh, stock prediction, etc. A knowledge graph reasoning is a process to reason about new facts based on the known facts in knowledge graphs. For example, given the query entity SAM as a query relation direct case, our goal is to infer the answer entity uh, spider 2 given the evidences in KGs. There are three types of methods for KG reasoning. The triple based methods directly model on the triplets based on their embeddings. Path based methods use paths between the query and answer entity to do the reasoning. Uh, subgraph based methods use a local subgraph structure on the query entity and the answer entity. Uh, the framework of KG uh, reasoning uh, learning in KG is that follows given the KG, all the observed triplets are regarded as positive triplets, and the unobserved triplets have large chance to be negative. Then we use the model to score the triple triplets by maximizing the score on the observed triplets and minimizing the score on unobserved ones. By theoretically optimizing the objective, we aim to preserve as much information on the original graph as possible. Then let's talk about the, uh, some of the representative KG reading methods. The triplet based methods firstly map the entities and relations into non dimensional representations, namely embeddings. Then the scoring function measures the probability of triplets based on embeddings, uh, such as trans C and CONV. Uh, the benefits of, of using embeddings uh, is that you can, uh, efficient, can do efficient computation and can easily inject it into other machine learning frameworks. However, these methods cannot generate generalize to unseen entities in inference, and it is hard to be interpretable. Uh, the path based methods use paths between the query entity and the answer entity to mine or mine rules to generate the paths. The representative works are path ranking, deep paths, uh, drum, iron logic. Uh, the benefits of path based methods are that the rules are uh, inductive since it does not rely on the entities and the paths can provide interpretable evidences. The problem is that we can only generate a limited number of paths, hence the, the many implicit rules cannot be discovered. Besides, the paths cannot capture complex structures in the graph. Recently, there are several methods leveraging the power of a graph neural network to learn from knowledge graphs. In this page, we show three types of uh, GN-based methods. R, RGCN, CompGCN, and the KEGCN design different variants of Manina GCN to learn high-level embeddings based on the low-level embeddings. Then the high-level embeddings are measured by some certain score functions. These methods uh, just gain some marginal improvements based on the plain graph computation network. Grill is an inter interesting work on KG. Given the query entity and answer entity, it extracts the including subgraph between the two entities. Then an attention-based uh, graph neural network is applied, on, uh, is applied on the subgraph to predict the target relation. Since the subgraph modeling does not rely on the entity embeddings, it can generalize to unseen entities in inference. DPMP and dynamically prune the subgraph uh, during uh, of the subgraph of message passing during reasoning steps. It designs a very complex system uh, with a global GCN and a uh, attentive G uh, GCN to guide the attention flow. The attention flow then indicates which entity is more likely to be the answer. Using using graph neural network for knowledge graph can help to my structural patterns. 
The subgraph structure can be inductive and interpretable. However, most of these methods ignore the symmetric patterns and the computation cost there is very expensive. Empirically, the graph neural network based methods can better capture the symmetric and the symmetric patterns in other graphs. Uh, our method here uh, is in this group. We call it as red GN and show as red GN shows better effectiveness and efficiency for KG reasoning. And let's introduce our proposed method here. Inspired by the inductive and the interpretation ability of relational parts, we first uh, propose a new subgraph structure called relational digraph based on the parts. First, we augment the parts to have the same lines by reverse and identity relations. This is the general trick in the knowledge graph reasoning area. Then we stack the parts in each step in the, uh, we stack the entities in, uh, in, in, each in each step in the same layer as the subgraph here. The subgraph is a directed graph, which has a single source entity as a query entity and a single sync entity as an answer entity. Then all the paths between the query entity and the answer entity can be found in the subgraph. So our goal is to use such a structure to infer new facts. Such a structure preserves all the paths between the query entity and the answer entity. The logic order is preserved since it is a directed graph. Besides, we aim to singly rely on this relational structure without using the entity embeddings. In other words, the subgraph is identity-free for entities. Then we can generalize the, the learned structure to unseen entities in inference. The last question is how to compute on this subgraph. The general, the general uh, steps for reasoning is to firstly, we extract the neighborhoods of both the query entity EQ and the answer entity EA. Uh, then we take inter intersections to construct the subgraph. Finally, we can run messy passing and use the graph level representation of this subgraph as a subgraph encoding. However, this step is very time consuming when there are many answer entities to be scored. To, to solve this problem, first we observe that many of the subgraphs are and many of the subgraphs with the same query entity EQ are overlapped, as in this question, inspired, in, inspired by the fact that overlapping subgraphs can be solved by dynamic programming. We find that relational digraphs can be recursively constructed as in this form. The, uh, the relational digraph of the air layer can be constructed based on recursively based on the uh, Relational digraph with the depths r minus one. This further inspired us to recursively encode the multiple relational digraph as in the red figure. In the first step, we encode the r digraph with depths one from the set query entity to the first order levels. Then, in the second step, we encode the r digraph with depths two based on uh, those with depths one. Finally, we encode our network graphs for multiple answer entities in the single uh, forward precise. The circles here and the rectangles here represent two different relational digraphs in the computing graph. So we can recursively and uh, compute in parallel for uh, multiple, uh, multiple, query, multiple answer entities with just a single forward step. Here we briefly introduce the graph neural design of graph neural network here. Uh, different from the general graph neural networks, the representations here are query dependent. This means that uh, our representations depend on the query entity EQ and the query relation ERQ. Uh, and we have a query dependent attention to control the weights of different edges based on the query. Since the top layer representations encode, can encode the structure of our digraph, we can simply score the triplets by the top layer entity representations. The model parameters are very few. 
since we only have some shared weights in the different in each layer, the relation and the relation embeddings and the final uh, scoring weights. The right hand side shows the algorithm of red GN. We, we can see that it is uh, much simpler than the general uh, version of subgraph encoding. We only have a single loop uh, that's sample neighborhood as, as, as well as encoding the representations. So this algorithm should be more efficient. Then we show the effectiveness in both transductive reasoning and the inductive reasoning. In the transductive reasoning, the testing set shares the same set of entities and relations as the training set. But in the inductive setting, the training and the testing set share a different set of entities, but the same uh, set of relations. This means that the entities in the inference is not visited, it is not seen in the training set. Since uh, grill is very expensive, it cannot be well applied on the transductive reasoning setting. Composition and the DPMPN cannot be uh, applied in, in the inductive reasoning since the entity embeddings are required in the models. RedGN shows a great significance in different data sets, especially in the data set World Night 18 RR. Our method is more than 0.5 MRR, uh, where the baselines are all lower than 0.5. Uh, as for the, all the metrics, the larger, the better. As for efficiency, the computation cost of red GN is at the uh, same scale as the parse based methods like neural LP, neural LP, and DRAM. And our convergence is very fast, as in the uh, red curve. Also, this is a uh, computation cost in the transductive setting. Uh, it is more expensive than the triplet based method since we compute on the subgraph rather than simple edges. However, it is more efficient than the other GM methods like COMGC and uh, DPMPN. Meanwhile, RedGN is parameter efficient since it requires no NTD embeddings. We showed some interpretable results based on the attention weights. We extract the subgraph with larger attention weights. Uh, the top and the bottom subgraphs show the same query entity and the answer entity, but different query relations as shown. The learned structures are query dependent. It can extract some rule-like patterns like in these figures. Uh, also, we show the inference of depths as in the red lines, the performance of red gene increases with deeper depths since it can visit more evidence, uh, more entities as evidences. Uh, where the other gene-based methods will suffer the problem of over smoothing leading to poor performance when the depth gets larger. Finally, we summarize this paper here. In the literature, relational parts, uh, rules, and the subgraphs are different uh, data structures for KG learning. They have different advantages and weaknesses. We propose a relational digraph called R digraph as a new kind of subgraph structure that is interpretable, transferable for unseen entities. It preserves the local topology, uh, local topologies with the well designed graph neural networks. And besides, our digraph is computation friendly. As for future works, since RedGM propagates within a progressively growing neighborhood, the scalability issue will appear for larger depths. Hence, how to reduce the scope of neighborhood expansion is essential for the model to get deeper. The hyperparameter and the graph neural network structure for region are only briefly set in this paper. We think that with better hyperparameters and architecture design, the performance can be further improved Besides, we would like to say RedGN can benefit uh, more tasks such as relation prediction and entity classification. I will stop here. Thanks for listening. You can ask any questions here or send email to me for discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions from the participants? Yeah, uh, hello, uh, I have a question. Hello. Uh, just um, uh, if I uh, 
thank you for the presentation. It was quite in, quite interesting. Uh, my question is, if I got you right, uh, you uh, you build subgraph directed subgraph uh, for each uh, for each entity like SAM, and then you try to learn on this subgraph, right? Yes. Uh, okay, but uh, uh, how you decide the number of uh, age hops uh, for uh, for each subgraph? The hop, the number of hops, right? Yes, the each hops. You mean the depths? Okay. Uh, yeah. Actually, we set the same number of depths for different uh, query entity and uh, uh, answer entities. Uh, since, like for graph neural network, it, it is hard to distinguish the depths for different uh, for different uh, nodes. So it is mm -hmm. fine to set the depths for, for the same the same for different uh, answer entities. But the model can adaptively learn different kinds of depths. Like here, we, if the for a given uh, for a given pair of entities, it can reduce the length by learning the identity identity. This is a self loop, so the depth can be re reduced by the uh, width here. Mm, so it can okay. increase it. In yeah, uh, I think the length should be dependent on the query. Uh, the number of hops yeah. that you you have in your subgraph, but also uh, I mean this is very I mean this is very interesting uh, uh, work. But uh, also about the query, I mean now the traditional way is that you learn embedding uh, embedding for the entity, and then you can you are able to generalize that on uh, multiple queries. But for you, uh, the uh, only disadvantage that might see is you have to learn for every for every query, and yeah. uh, that might hurt a bit the generalization, but it makes you very good on to answer this specific query. So that also, uh, I mean, that also might account for the difference in the result. But uh, I would like to see how this will be applied in uh, uh, in a different setting when when you you are a bit of a query ag agnostic uh, and you need to uh, like that front uh, like uh, from that transductive uh, setting. Okay. So I saw you, you. You have a transductive results. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. But uh, I'm not sure if uh, if like uh, if I don't have the query or the query is a bit vague because you will be conditioned on the queries and uh, I'm not sure if you will uh, if the um, if the embedding will be generalizable. Uh, so that the only use case I might. Uh, so how you work with this? I work with what? How you work in such case? I mean, if you want to generalize, uh, and uh, I mean, you, 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 your model answers the query very well, but if you don't have the query, it might be, uh, uh, I mean, you don't generalize over multiple queries because the embedding is not shared. Uh, I would like to yes, uh, ask you, uh, sorry, I, I would like to ask you, Ahmed and Young, to continue the uh, chat about the, the discussion about the paper in. Uh, on the chat because mm. I, okay. I will have Bye. unfortunately to move to the third paper mm. okay. to keep the schedule running. Thank you so much.